Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you guys are having a great Sunday afternoon. Hope you guys tune in to our live stream coming up in a couple of hours here. Uh, it has been the Dallas Cowboys Sunday afternoon vent session, but today maybe we'll look at this and say, hmm, it's post-draft, think... Um, Think of it as what we think we're going to get. I have a couple of things that I'm really excited about from this draft that I believe that the Cowboys will actually going in a direction with a couple of things that I really, really love. Um, one of the things that I've always loved, and I've talked about this for a number of years, um, I'm old school, okay? And that is 12 personnel. I remember years ago talking about how much i love 12 personnel and i remember it was big game james was like man if i ever see he's like man get rid of that old ass offense man 12 personnel man screw that but uh, you know like i said i'm old and it's okay because you know big game james he's a young guy you know he doesn't have all this gray and everything else but see i've always loved 12 personnel because to me if you have the right type of personnel to work with this offense, it can be multidimensional. See, typically, when you think of having a two tight end set, it's, you know, most people look at it as like a jumbo package. You end up having the big guys in there because you're trying to run the football. But see, I don't look at it as that, and the Cowboys have actually evolved with this. And I've had a few things in my mind that I've believed about 12 personnel, but I didn't have the numbers per se to back it up but here's the thing that I, I think about see sometimes you have to do things out of necessity that ends up being that you find out wow this is a good thing see for example the cowboys back in 2014 when tony romo came in from the offseason having you know a multitude of injuries we played the San Francisco 49ers, and at that time, our offense had always been predicated on tons and tons of throwing. You know, we just threw the hell out of the football, and Tony Romo was great at it, but it was kind of like you live with the sword and you died with the sword. Sometimes you'd have the miraculous games that Tony Romo would end up leading us to victory, or we'd have the games like against um, Denver, where it's a complete shootout, and we lose like 51-49. That season, when Tony Romo came off of injury, the first game against the 49ers, I think there were three interceptions, and you were looking at Tony Romo and saying, Romo's lost it. He couldn't get the ball 25 yards down the field, and you just said, uh-oh, we're in trouble. So what the Cowboys did was, to give Tony Romo time to heal, was they started really relying on DeMarco Murray and running the football. DeMarco Murray ended up with 1,800 yards that season, and statistically, that season was the best season of um, Tony Romo's career, and that was the catch-no-catch away from being at, at the NFC Championship game. And the Cowboys found out, wow, running the football and being balanced is a better fit for our offense than just saying Tony Romo, the gunslinger. And so we tried to continue that, and eventually they ended up drafting, I think, Zeke Elliott to keep that formula going for Tony Romo, but Tony Romo unfortunately got hurt, and Dak took over, but that formula has been the winning formula for the Cowboys. The problem lately, as Zeke has gotten older and our offensive line has gotten older, it's been harder to run, and you could look at our offense from two seasons this past year where we had the first half of the season where the offense was doing incredible things. To the second half of the season where, you know, we weren't able to run the football and we had gotten Mike, Michael Gallup back and we actually weren't doing as well. And thinking about this, it actually makes sense because 12 personnel, 12 personnel. So let, let me explain to you what the difference is, okay? 12 personnel is the second number denotes the number of tight ends. The first number denotes the number of running backs. So if you have tw uh, 21 personnel, that would be two running backs and one tight end. If you have 11 personnel, that's one tight end, one running back, and typically three wide receivers. You see where this goes? If you have 12 personnel, that means you have one running back and two wide receivers. I'm assuming two tight ends and then two wide receivers as well. So 
The problem Big James had with it was, man, you know, we've got these stud wide receivers between, you know, CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper. You want to exploit having those guys going vertically. Yes, I get that. I get that. But in the same breath, the Cowboys have been using 12 personnel more and more lately. And in fact, the first half of the season, they really relied on that completely because Michael Gallup was gone. And the light bulb kind of came on today, realizing that the Cowboys offense was actually less effective after Michael Gallup came back because they stopped running 12 personnel quite as much. See, here's the thing. Big Game James was thinking about 12 personnel, the old school style, which would be we're just going to have two tight ends and we're going to run the football. And, and that's typically what it used to be. But when you have a guy like a Tony Pollard, see, this is where you get to be creative. When you got a guy like Tony Pollard, who is a running back slash wide receiver, which is the opposite of, say, Debo. Debo is a wide receiver slash running back. His main gig is to be a wide receiver. They just realize using him in the backfield, he's more effect- He's really effective. Tony Pollard is a great running back and a guy who works well in space, but who's also been a wide receiver. His bread and butter is running the football. So hypothetically, here's what you have with this. And with the Cowboys um, getting... A great tight end, or at least we hope he's going to be a great tight end, um, in, uh, to the mix. Then all of a sudden you start thinking about possibilities for this offense. See, Jake uh, from Wisconsin, Jake Ferguson, he is... A wide body, he's kind of a security blanket type. Um, he's a good blocker, and he doesn't. He's not fast, but he breaks tackles, and he's got a lot of size. He's got good height, and so on. So let's say you got Dalton Schultz, and you got Jake there, right? And now that you don't have Amari Cooper, you've got your CD Lamb, and then eventually Michael Gallup. Those are your two receivers there. CD is a great guy to have mismatches with. And, you know, Michael Gallup is a good possession receiver. The problem is Michael Gallup probably won't be ready until about the middle of the season. But just listen to me here for a second. When a defensive coordinator sees two tight ends, typically what will happen is they'll end up putting in bigger linebackers because you need strength to go against this. Because now potentially you have seven guys that you have to block. You got your centers, your two guards, your two tackles, and two tight ends. And you're probably going to end up putting your safety in the box because that's seven against seven. Or if you don't put the safety, if you put the safety in, eight against seven. That's what you have to do to match up with it. But let's say you have Tony Pollard in the back and you have Jake and you have Dalton Schultz. Both of those guys can be receivers. You can go from this as you line up and Dak gets there, and this is where Dak is is great because he can take the pressure. He can take the pressure. You get in there. If the defense goes to heavy package, you can go ahead and split Tony Pollard out. Go to an empty backfield. You can shift, and one of your tight ends can go out like their receiver with Dalton Schultz or if we're talking about Semi Fuco. You go from being a running formation now to a five wide out set where you've got now numbers of receivers that are going against big run stopping linebackers. And with Dak being that guy that can find the open guy, it's deadly. And I believe personally that the Cowboys were doing it really well. But I found something today that actually helped me to prove. You know, you, there's a lot of times you can believe something to be true but you may not exactly have the facts to back it up. And so here's where this is interesting here. This is an article by pro football. The boys at pro football focus, pro football focus. You can look at, this is 11 person, sorry, 11 personnel. Okay. 
right there. The rate that the Cowboys used 11 personnel, which is one running back and one uh, tight end and three wide receivers, 60% of the time, 61% of the time, 68% of the time, 67, 79, and then they drop down to 55% of the time. Whoa. And again, like I was saying, part of that reason was is you had Michael Gallup gone. So you looked at it and said, well, CD and Amari are going to be my main guys in here. We did still do some 11 personnel with Cedric Wilson and stuff, but she looked at it and said, mm, you know, between Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz, you were actually better off doing 12 personnel. So the Cowboys, through the course of the last five years or so, have been doing less and less of those two different groupings. So, and it goes on to basically say the same thing I've said, too. With, with Gallup's sideline much of the season, the Cowboys have relied on Jarwin and his tight end teammate Dalton Schultz to create an environment where Pac Prescott can define reads of play action. The play action on just 90% of the personal snaps on 50%. Um, excuse me. Let, me. let me say it again. On 11 personnel, they did play action only 19% of the time. But in 12 personnel... Half of the time, it's play action. And if you don't know what play action is, that means you're basically faking the run and going to a pass. So what you do, for example, is you got a two tight end set. It looks like you're going to run the football. You fake the dive. Dak fakes handing off to Zeke, pulls it out of his belly, and he bootlegs outside. And that's where your tight ends look like they take a step, like they're going to block, and then they go out for a pass and then you can throw across the grain here hit a guy in the slot cd lamb boom and you get big plays aha well you know we end up losing uh uh blake jarwin of course to a hip injury so he's gone and that's where we got jake from wisconsin um they can also run the okay. And this is this. I love this article. This is exactly. This is what I've been telling you guys. This is where me and DMV were so happy and elated um, when we ended up drafting De, uh, Jake in the fourth round. They can run the ball from these sets. Having two tight ends increased diversity on the run game with Dallas and eleven personnel. It's a duo scheme. It also known as a power without the pullers accounts for ten percent of the team's snaps, but. It accounts for 29% in the 12 personnel. Cowboys can have a more punch-you-in-the-mouth type of offense than a zone-based team that are in that personal grouping. So what that says is we can maul you with this. We can steamroll you. And the great thing about this is, is you can use this and do anything from it. See, when me and... Uh, big game James had the discussion. You didn't look at it being as a multifaceted offense. Like I said, this was a, a, a lot of t- a long time ago. But you can be dynamic with it because of having a Tony Pollard, because of having um, now Jake um, Ferguson uh, from Wisconsin. I'm going to keep saying Jake from Wisconsin as opposed to Jake from State Farm, um, and having Dalton Schultz, um, and also having. If you use Semi Fuco as a tight end, you can actually have this whole offense that is going to basically go wherever the defense isn't. And the defense can't stop the run and have numbers against five out wideouts. And you can do both from each of those. And this is why I'm excited as can be about what this offense can be. If you are um, Kellen Moore, you should be licking your chops. And, and I think. Hopefully the YouTube gobs don't get me here. But this is, uh, to give me an example here, you can see right there, boom, you got the tight ends tight, and you got Zeke running right up the middle there, right? You see that? Okay. Now if you go down here to another one, this is another 12 personnel formation, and you can see here we've got the tight ends out wide. So you've got five blockers, and they can't cover everybody. And then it's a matter of Dak. That, that was a, a, a play action. You see Dak is going to go, boom, out of this empty backfield, bootleg, and find the open man. So this gives you versatility. And look at this. You're going deep out of 12 personnel. So for me, 
this is one of the things that really excites the hell out of me as the season gets close close and this my friends can be a difference maker on the offense and so i'm going to go ahead and get this up and get ready for our live stream in about an hour and a half and i'll see you shortly for us today and we will leave you with a i can't do it we'll do it live okay we'll, no. we'll do it live do it live i can i'll write it and we'll do it live and thing sucks in five four three that's tomorrow and that is it for us today i'm bill o'reilly thanks again for watching we'll